now going to assemble the corsage. So I'm going to take one of the flowers and a length of tape. And remember, we have to stretch the tape. Always you have to stretch the tape. I can't stress that enough. Put it to the end of your flower underneath your leaf. Take your heavier gauge wire that I talked about earlier. Place it next to the rest of the wire and tape it round. You don't have to go all the way to the bottom at this stage. It's quite firm, see? It will hold the flower. Okay. What we do now is we take another flower, place it below the first flower. Again, because we've got a long piece of tape, just keep twisting and twisting. And again, just make sure you can hold it upside down without either of the flowers falling off, right? And when you're sure that you've got that, then take your last flower, put it again below the, the one you've just put on, and twist and twist, making sure now at this point that you use all the tape and go right to the end so that you have <coughs> a totally covered wire. And because we've hardened and varnished them, these are quite durable now, so we can pull the flower, pull the petals, the leaves, all into shape, and that is our finished creation. I found the best way to add colour to my petals is to use an overhead projector pen, which is a permanent marker. This will not rub off. You don't have to be an artist to paint on your petals. All you need are the tools. You can just draw lines, dots, squiggles, whatever. It really doesn't matter. Let me show you how easy it is. So take your pen, just do, let's do a squiggle. Just take them up the pen like that. That's how we start. It's quite nice if we add another colour. And we'll do a few little dashes this time. As I say, I'm not an artist, but when you put a lot of petals together like that, you can see how attractive it would be. I'm going to show you two I made earlier. There you go. Coming up next is a lovely selection. Some of the items use techniques I'll show you later. There's a new paint called Treasure Trove. It's ideal for jewellery. There's a silver, a black and a gold. Now I have to emphasise that these paints are metallic and have to be stirred. Otherwise the metal particles will stay at the bottom of the tin. Let me show you some of my jewellery collection. My particular favourite is the cross in the middle. 
All of these have been made with a template, which I'll show you later. This is the one I use for making the cross. We simply take these little studs and press them into the template to make a shape. If you want to make jewellery, then you'll want to make some fashion earrings. These are so light to wear, it's unbelievable. Just to recap, there are three kinds of paint. The opaque paint produces a porcelain effect, the transparent film produces a glass effect, and there is the metallic paint. The first paint effect I want to show you is called mottling, and the mottling goes right through the paint. Let me show you how to get the mottle effect. You take a spoonful of one colour, like so, and add it to another. You mustn't stir the paint at this point. This is what it looks like. It's just one paint sitting in another. I'm going to pick up a shape and see what effect we get. There it is. A lovely model and everyone is different. Now all the paints are intermixable, I'll just give you an example. You simply add one paint to another until you get the colour that you're looking for. Another paint effect is paint itself. Just look at these beautiful butterflies, they really are a work of art. Looking on the top of the wing, you see the acrylic paint. The underside of the wing that you can see in reflection has been hand painted. There are all sorts of things we can make for Christmas decorations and I'm going to show you a few examples. If it's Christmas then we shall need some holly and to get the prickles we shall need to use a template. As well as holly we shall want some mistletoe. The berries are white beads which have been wired on. Now for some Christmas baubles. Compared with the holly this type of decoration requires an added level of construction. For these, we'll need a polystyrene ball. Fixate wires to the ball with masking tape. Try to get them equally spaced. Twist the wires at both ends. Tease back the wire to extract the ball and then reform the wires. Dip the bauble into the paint. When you extract it, one of the panels will have burst. Quickly pop out the alternate panels and you'll end up with a nice little bauble. This crinkly edge makes a good mobile and I'll show you how it's formed. Just wind the wire round and round and round until you come to the required length. Then stop, pull it off, hold both ends and pull. There you go. The finished product. This is one that I dipped earlier. The butterflies you saw earlier were extremely detailed. The butterflies behind me are not so complicated, but they give an idea of the range of complexity you can choose to work with. And finally, I just wanted to say, I hope you get as much pleasure as I've had over many, many years. It's a wonderful art. Mm -hmm.